Good afternoon. It is uh, 4 o'clock on June 24th, 2021. I'd like to call the regular meeting of the Harlem Municipal Utilities Board of Trustees to order. I'd like to start by saying that uh, Nella Sievert is uh, with us on Zoom. And I would also like to welcome our newest board member, Michelle Erickson. Thank, Thank you. you for joining us. Welcome, Thank Michelle. You. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, first article of business is the approval of the agenda. Mr. Chair, I do have a one, oh. uh, one possible addition. Okay. Uh, with regard to item number three, uh, part C, upcoming board meetings, uh, we've been notified by uh, Steve Nadel, council, that we may have to call special meetings uh, from now probably through the end of July uh, if we get appraisals with regard to the telecom petition. So that okay. could be a pending. So, so we will add that to the potential upcoming board meetings. I move to approve the agenda as revised. I second. And roll call vote. Terry I. Tara I. Michelle I. And Cybert I. Okay. So and that is approved. Next item is the approval of the consent agenda. The consent agenda can includes the minutes of the June 10th board meeting. The abstract of claims number 1191 in the amount of $497,351. Upcoming board meetings, we have a July 8th electronic board meeting, a July 22nd regular board meeting, and possible special board meetings as, as, required, by as required by council. I move to approve the consent agenda. I second. And roll call vote. Terry I. Terrell I. Michelle I. I cannot hear Nella, so if she... Nella, did you vote on that? She muted herself again. Oh. Nella? We only need three votes anyway, right? <laughs> Nella? Yes. Um, did you vote on the consent agenda? I didn't hear anything, but I'll vote aye. It, yeah, it was just approving the uh, minutes abstract and upcoming board meetings. Yep. Okay. Okay. On to item number four, the banking resolutions. We have resolution number, number 43-2021, machine signed signatures. Can we do all these in one motion? Yep. Okay. And then resolution number 44, 2021 is the uh, corporate authorization. Resolution 45-2021, wire transfer authorization. And the general policy number 50, bank signature authorization. And for anybody that's new, these are always required when we get a new board member or CEO, so. I move to approve the banking resolutions. Valuable second. Nella second. Roll call vote. Terry I. Terry I. Michelle. Five or die. Yeah. Motion carried. Item number five is amend and restated amended and restated energy scheduling and settlement service agreement with Tenasca. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> the board reviewed the RFP a few uh, meeting or two ago with regard to our power supply management uh, agreement. <clears throat> And uh, this is regards to services previously provided by PSA Analytics and the RFP address to NASCA and, and NextEra Energy uh, to pick up that portion of, of what uh, Marlon Verbus had been doing in the past. And so Tenasca was a low bid in that regard. We've been dealing with Tenasca since 2015 when we entered the SPP uh, 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 system. And this basically amended and restated agreement is of our original agreement we did with them in 2015. It's just been amended to add the additional services they're going to provide. So the recommendation is to approve. Council has approved this. Uh, there was a, <clears throat> a couple of things with regard to transmission service invoicing and settlement. Uh, we just have to get that clarified with Tenasca. That currently is handled by MCR on an annual basis. So. Okay. But the recommendation is for approval. So move. I second. Roll call vote. Terry I. Terry I. Michelle I. Ivor I. Motion no. carried. 
Item number six is FCC mandated robocall mitigation program with Arion in the amount of $9,000 for three years plus $1,000 installation fee. <clears throat> yes, uh, this is one of those um, last minute ones pushed by FCC. It's an FCC mandate that we have to do this program. And they gave us until the end of June to have a program in place, so it was a short notice. Uh, we looked to uh, a couple of vendors, Arion, is our current and preferred vendor and that was their uh, quote was three thousand a year per year for three years plus the one thousand dollar installation fee staff recommendation is to approve it is a non-budget item and it's mandated okay this will actually reduce the number of robocalls that people receive on their home phones that's what it's supposed to yes <laughs> <laughs> no guarantees i say how's your uh, confidence level? <laughs> yeah. no guarantees but that's the but it is fcc it, mandated yes so. it is fcc mandated were there other options or was this the legitimate only? Uh, Jim? Um, this is a low cost, no hardware install solution. Um, of course, you can always purchase servers and licensing mm -hmm. fees for your own robocall. It doesn't make any sense not to go with uh, the uh, yep. system that Arion has. Okay. And we're already engaged with Arion yeah. in other matters. So. I move to approve the robocall mitigation program with Ariane. I second. Okay, roll call vote. Terry I. Tara I. Michelle I. Ivor I. Okay, item number seven. Lease agreement for single mode dark fiber leased telecommunication service between Iowa Communications Network, Harlan Municipal Utilities, and Harlan Community Library. <coughs> this was a holdover from excuse me, from a previous meeting. Uh, this is in regard to an ICN uh, connection up at the city library. And uh, Jim had been in communication with the library staff about where they stood on the lease space, but it has not been resolved. Uh, so this, you want to lay this over again or go ahead and take action on our uh, part? It needs to be laid over. Matt reviewed it and pointed out section 6.1, 2, and 3, which is... Uh, the library and location, and I'm in email conversation with ICN. Okay. To, uh, Another 30 day layover? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll take it up at the next meeting. Yeah. Okay. Item number eight is receive and file telecommunications asset appraisal response to the telecom petition. Yes. As the board may recall, uh, according to Iowa Code, we we're required to conduct three different appraisals. Uh, two of the Appraisals are business appraisals, uh, one that we choose, one that is appraiser um, approved by the IUB, and then uh, we also had to do an asset appraisal. And so this is for the asset appraisal as pre previously arranged with the organization EMA uh, to do that, and we have received their appraisal. And so what we need the board to do is receive and file uh, so that we can post this into our website. We have to post all the appraisals to the website. So. And I did not put that. I see some of you looking for yeah. in your packets yeah. since it was 50-some pages. Oh. Everybody, you guys did get yep. it emailed, and then there's hard copies if you want to look at them, mm -hmm. but they have to stay here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And just the highlights of that appraisal are, <clears throat> like most, most communication technology and computer technology and phone technology, it has a limited life. A lot of times, by the time you buy it, it's already outdated by the next generation of equipment. And so uh, a fair amount of the assets, if they were to be disposed of, uh, scrap or minimum value. So okay. it's less than what we carry on our asset list with five and seven year depreciation schedules. So. Okay. And I then move. the motion is just to receive and file it. You're yeah. not really approving anything. I move to receive and file the asset appraisal. I second. Roll call. Terry I. Terry I. Michelle I. Hi, everybody. Right. Number nine is bond reserve transfers to operating funds, annual debt service payment coverage. <clears throat> this has been one of those items that uh, some years the board addresses it, some years we just do it under the CEO authority, authority to transfer some funds. <clears throat> but uh, because of the amount of the transfers, uh, all being addressed at one point in time, uh, I thought it would be prudent to bring it to the board for transparency purposes. Uh, basically what we're doing, we have um, 
bond reserve accounts set up for the electric, the water, and the cable department where money is accrued on a monthly basis toward the annual or semi-annual payments, whatever they are. And so this simply moves the funds from that bond reserve account to the operating account where we can make the transactions for the payments. Uh, that single operating account is the only one where we can process money out. So it's a fund transfer. So we're just a motion to transfer the million seven, is that total? Yes, million seven oh seven four seventy five eighty cents total from the bond reserve accounts to the operating accounts so we can make the payments. So move. I second. Roll call. Terry I. Terry I. Michelle I. Good out. Nella I. Item number 10, audit engagement letter with Gronwald Bell Kin and Company, PC. Yep, this is our annual audit. It'll be coming up, uh, what, what's the schedule on that, Jenny? August? August. August. This is For the same audit that we've been using this past several years? Yes, yeah, okay. we just, uh, when did we renew that agreement? This, this spring or last year? Didn't we do a new I agreement? Think last year you updated This year. might be the second yeah. year. Second year, yeah. Okay, that's right. <laughs> Any I will move to approve the audit engagement letter. I'll second. Roll call. Terry I. Terrell I. Michelle I. I for I. Okay. <clears throat> Item number 11. Penalties and disconnects for electric, gas, and water utilities to resume to normal process July 1st, 2021. Yes, this is one of our COVID actions. Um, we had waived penalties, penalties and fees through June 30th as part of our efforts to work with customers during the COVID uh, pandemic period. And so we thought it should be a formal action by the board to reinstate those penalties and fees for late payments and, and past due accounts. Um, this sorry, will be effective You July mean COVID one. or was this the polar vortex? Polar, I'm sorry, polar yeah. vortex. Polar yeah. vortex, okay. okay. Yeah, sorry. I will make that motion. I'll second. Roll call. Terry I. Tara I. Michelle I. I would I. Okay. Item number 12, request from electric department to lengthen response time from 30 minutes to one hour when out of town until staffed with three journeyman linemen. <clears throat> this is a situation that arose as the board's aware. Uh, we're currently down two people in the electric department. And uh, so we really just have two people that are on call. So every other week they're on call. And we currently have a 30-minute uh, limitation. And so some, the request has been made to extend that to an hour so they can like, if they have to run an errand to Omaha or a little bit more than 15 minutes away or 30 minutes away, that just gives them a little bit more uh, response time uh, just until we can get the staffing back up. They're currently restricted to 30 minutes, uh, you know, according to the employee handbook. Which would make it impossible for them to go anywhere, but the, yeah. but here in town, exactly. and with only two of them, that's yeah. yeah. You're following your kids' to ball games and that. But this way, if they can go a little bit farther and get back, you know, yeah. in reasonable time. But yeah. and it's hard for them to switch because they just get off call and they're going back on again. Yeah. And we, if you guys approve it, we would just like it worded until there's a third full-time lineman. Then we don't have to bring it back to the board. We don't have to review it again. It would just stay in place until, if we don't get one before, after David gets out of the program. How, how often do they get called out? Because of the thunderstorms. Yeah, yeah thunderstorms <laughs> or high winds. You know, once in a while we'll throw stuff into the 69 lines and stuff, but it's not real well, often. If but, there's accidents and somebody hits something, and that's usually in the night hours where they're usually home and in town anyway. Yeah. So it's really um, going to be for in, probably 5 o'clock to... 10 o'clock. Right. Yeah. Yeah, right. And, and yeah. they, they are understanding, too, that if if they are in town, they're not going to wait an hour just to respond. They're still going to go out right away. But yeah. just since they're short-staffed, gives them a little bit of... Yeah. It's Yeah, usually the one that's on call has to call the other ones out anyway for the help. So if one is out of town, he'll call him anyway, and that person might arrive within the 30 minutes anyway to, to look at the stuff. So it's just giving that guy who's on call out a little bit more time to get back. And the, 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 maybe the, I won't call them important users, but like the hospital, they have a generator. Mm -hmm. And I was, so everybody that, if they go down, they've got a generator that they could use. 
for a period of time if they really need like health care and stuff like that. So yeah, I yeah. assume that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with it. It seems reasonable yeah. to me. It's just an accommodation due to the yeah. short staffing situation. So longer than normal, I think it's been a year and a half now. So yeah. Yeah, these two people have been on every other week rotation for the last year and a half. So. I move to approve the change and then we'll keep the change in effect until we have more staff. Third. Okay. I second. Roll call. Terry I. Terry I. Michelle I. And then, that, and then that will go into effect August 1st since it requires a 30 day notice since it's in the handbook. Okay. Item number 13 overtime pay while vacation sick comp leave. This is a request we're making on behalf of some of the staff. Uh, we've had a couple of situations come up where people were on vacation and had to come back to help with emergency repair or uh, emergency situations to, to uh, uh, get repairs made. And the way we're structured right now is it doesn't recognize or, or provide any, uh, I'm trying to think of the best way to explain it, uh, but it, it, it my thinking, if somebody's on vacation, they should get an incentive like a double overtime or something throughout that call out. Uh, the way it works right now is a, Jenny, maybe you better explain it so it's a little bit easier. You, you're the HR person. The, the effect is, is if they get called out like say at eight o'clock, they get paid that until like midnight and then it changes back to a base rate. And we just don't think that's fair to an employee. Who's well, basically it. how it is now is if somebody is takes like two hours of vacation during the day and then if they get called or let's that's a bad example three hours of vacation during the day and then they get called out that night their first two hours is always at the overtime rate because that's a call out they get paid for two hours whether they work 15 minutes or whether they work two hours they get two hours of call out pay at the overtime rate but if they work longer than that that first hour is going to be, or those first three hours are going to be at regular at the regular rate because they took three hours of vacation during the day. Because of, there's leave time in that day. Because that was changed when the handbook was changed. Mm -hmm. So let's let's take a step back. So if, let's let's say they take three hours of vacation and they get called out at five o'clock. But they get they get the. They get the call out pay for the first two hours, right? right? Correct. So then the third hour they would get regular, regular time pay. as opposed to overtime pay. Correct. Hmm. How often do you see this actually happening? The instance on the on the two people came in on vacation was the first instance we'd really seen since most of the time since we made the changes. Ha most of the time what happens, it, even though the electric department's the shortest staffed, it doesn't really happen to them mm -hmm. often, it's the water main breaks because those are the ones that usually take more than two hours to fix. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> so how often, like this year we probably had two instances where it happened, an employee was on vacation for three days that they happened to still be in town. So then they got called back in and they got regular pay for sub, they had to work from six at midnight till I think it was four o'clock in the morning and they got seven hours of regular pay for that because they were on vacation all day for those two days. Then they don't come in. If they would have been on vacation and been out of town, they wouldn't have come in. So why do we call them in when they're on vacation? Because they're the only help. ones we can get a hold of. Extra help. Yeah, they can get the job done quicker. Yeah. Instead of two guys in zero degree weather, they maybe could have three or four guys. In the case of an emergency, like a water main break, you're going to it's throw, you're gonna throw everything, everything you can at it. Yeah. Try Yes. And that's understandable. And at the same time, if you had somebody that got called in off of vacation to get regular pay, does seem, you know. Problem is, they may just not come. Yeah. 
Well, that's they, where might, they might be out of town. Yeah, yeah. well, that's yeah. that's where the idea of yeah. providing at least a vacation or at least an overtime level pay for something like that doesn't seem out of line. And it seems to happen most often with the water. I mean, you, you have one guy operator and a piece of equipment, and you got one guy in the bottom of the hole, and you need to have somebody standing by above ground. So usually there's more people involved in call outs on the water side. So that seems to be where it happens. So. And my guess is it doesn't happen terribly often. No, so. no, no. No, but it's it'll depend on how you want to word it. If you're going to word it for all overtime, or if you're just if you want to word it for emergency situations, that's where you're going to have the. Well, I think it's got to be an emergency yeah. situation. That's and then, so how are you going to define emergency situation? I'm just asking because that's what's well, going to be asked. That would be, defined, that would be defined by the department head. I would right. think. If, I would, if, okay. So. If the department head defines it as this one has to see situation and it's so approved. Yeah. yeah, I'm trying to figure out why we would call somebody in if it wasn't an emergency situation. You, know, you, would, you wouldn't you call would, them off vacation no. if it wasn't. So. Mm -hmm. In most water main breaks, you know, like I said, it does take longer, it takes more people because you're involving a lot of street cutting a lot of times. You know, it just it takes more manpower to do that. But. I mean, it'll pertain to also like over. The one, I, one of the main reasons it got changed was we had that an employee that was working over the lunch hour. They were taking vacation in the afternoon. They wanted overtime because they stayed late. They were supposed to be off that afternoon. So it's just gonna, it'll pertain to all of those situations just so that you guys. What we are could do, aware well, of that. in a deal like that, if, if 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 they're late getting off, maybe they had scheduled four hours of PTO. Maybe they just take three hours of PTO. Okay, you make that change. Well, they took it to the arbitration, and then you guys said, no, go ahead and pay it as the overtime. And then that's when it was changed in the handbook. What about uh, if, if the board is willing to address this, uh, if, if the board agrees, uh, we can draft some language and bring it back to the board before it's uh, finally approved? Yeah, because I think we need to define what an emergency is. Okay. So bring back to the, do you guys want to have a committee meeting before the next board meeting to discuss it, like the admin committee, or? I think I think we just need some language so we know what we're approving. Okay. We'll draft some language and route it for review and then bring it back in July. And you want it to be worded somewhat as emergency situations only? I think so. I think that's really what we're looking at. Because that's the only case where somebody on vacation or sick leave would be called in, so. An emergency repair. So. Well, sick leave, I would think they wouldn't be able to come in. You wouldn't think. Well, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but they're not always sick when they're taking sick leave. They yeah. could be. They oh. could have taken sick leave to take For a family kid. Family members. Oh, that's well, right. Yeah. So something. it's not that it's not that they're always sick. It's they okay. could have just had time off. To our our, to an our sick leave allows for family members taking okay. them to the doctor. Because that was brought up before too. That yeah. oh, why are they getting called out if they're sick? But. Sounds like we need a little bit of uh, clarification on that before we vote okay. on it, but we'll, we'll take right, that up we'll do the that. next meeting. So, All right, item 14, water conservation policy discussion. Okay, we've had some conversations uh, <coughs> on penalties and usage allocation, um, that type of thing. And uh, after the way we're set up now uh, in our, our policy is a 10 times penalty. Uh, when we get to that point of implementing penalties and surcharges. And in discussions with our software vendor on, on the uh, customer service side, uh, the indication from them is that's going to be very difficult to implement on a practical basis. So we had a conference call today, and the more reasonable approach would be a tiered, like $50, uh, $50 per thousand gallons or something along those lines, a fixed dollar amount per use. Uh, type penalty versus a 10 times some arbitrary number. Um, so we're waiting for a formal proposal from them uh, on exactly what be, would be involved in this, but they said it really shouldn't take very long at all to implement if we go to the dollar per tier per thousand uh, type scenario. We just have to give him the parameters where we want to set that. So we'll have to come up with something for residential use, commercial use, industrial, kind of a, a stepped up type program. 
Well, it would just be the way I understood it. We would just be able to set a dollar amount per thousand gallons. It wouldn't have to be separated between residential commercial. It okay. would just be per, per gallons. So, so this is the penalty if somebody fills up their swimming pool than we're supposed to, is that? Yes. Uh, right, right now, the way it reads is we're, we're going to use their uh, March usage as like a baseline for their usage. And then if we get into the actual uh, water emergency, uh, that would be the basis. And then they would be subject to a surcharge X amount for usage over that baseline. It, it will be for anybody, really, because the marsh, the way it's worded now, it's you would base it off of the March usage if you use 3,000 gallons in March and say there's a water emergency put into place in August. You will compare your August usage to your March usage. If you use more than you did in March, you will pay a penalty for whatever is set. Okay. There, there's a wide variety of misinformation floating around. This is why I, I would like to ask a few questions sure. In, sure. in regard to this. First of all, what level are we at currently? Tier one. We one are one. still in tier one. So yes. there are no penalties in place as of right not now. Not at this point in time. Okay. That's one thing that is certainly not, that's not the, the word on the street. The sure. second item is, and, and this is a, an issue, if someone feels that their marsh usage was an anomaly, um, what would they do to protest that? They, they would contact the office. Uh, give you an example. Uh, we, had a, we have a customer who has some family members moving back, mm -hmm. uh, sim, uh, children. Uh, they're going to move back and, and be living with them. And so that's a change to what their March usage was. That's just one example. So if you um, have an anomaly that would cause that, the, the most important thing is to communicate with yes. HMU and the customer service people to, to mitigate Absolutely. that ahead of time. Okay, that's good. Whether they're a snowbird or whatever the situation okay. might be. The next question was, um, I'm, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought there for a second. Um, if somebody wants to keep track of their usage, um, we don't keep real-time statistics, correct? We, we read once a month. Correct. So yeah. it, it, if somebody wants to keep track of their water usage so they know where they're at, how do they do that? Do they... On the top of everybody's water meter in the basement, it has the gallons that you use, and you can go down there, and, and it gets, from the back side, it goes zeros, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands. So if you're reading from right to left, just say, your first three numbers, that'd be 100 gallons. If you had one mm -hmm. in that first, third slot over, that's 100 gallons. If you had 31 in there, that's 3,100 gallons. I mean, if anybody wants to call down, you know, we can explain that to them, how to I read their I think that's going to be fairly important because I think there are people that are going to be concerned about their usage that won't know how to read it or they won't know when their last reading was or what the last reading was because it doesn't reset to zero. It, it's a continuous mm -hmm. number, correct? Sure. So yeah. if you don't know what your last reading was, can they call into the office and get that, what the date was and what that reading was? On their last bill, they should have their, their amounts that they used, but they mm -hmm. also can call in and say, you know, at January, uh, at, just say January 1st, January 31st, or whatever your billing cycle is, mm -hmm. you know, their they'll bill, be able to call down and get the bill shows the day their meter right. was read and it shows the reading. Shows what the reading was. Yeah. Yeah. I, I we have say, that information. Right. But it's just my I, be, I believe in my heart that the, while there's a lot of people out there that will be able to do that and will be interested in it, you're going to have some people that struggle with the reading of the yeah. meter and or such. And I encourage anyone that has those issues to call customer service and ask for help because we don't want this to be a, a, an adversarial situation. We want everybody to work together and help us through this problem. So if you have questions, don't hesitate to call. Yep. Is that fair? Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Um, so right now we are still in the tier one. We yes. are not currently uh, penalizing. We're just asking the public to curtail usage That's whenever correct. possible. Yeah. The, only the biggest that, issue is just hopefully we don't get to that. Hopefully we don't get to that. The, the, only, big, the only usage we have asked to curtail is our single interruptible customer. Right. So the biggest the biggest thing is is don't water your yard, don't wash your car. Right. right. I mean yeah. that's. That's some pretty easy things to think about. And, and if you're gonna, if, if you have a significant water usage, if I had a reason for it, and is that the kind of thing that we could, they could call and talk about other alternatives? Yes. And would that just be through customer service or is there something specific? Well, customer, talk? they'd call customer service and if they think they're, they've got a leak or something, you know, we've, we've meter shop has went out, but die in the back of the, 
the stools and that, and if it leaks through, showing them they got leaks, you know, a drip, a drip causes leaks. I mean, we have people that do go out, we put a flow meter on the meter to see if there's movement on their meter when they think they have everything shut off. I mean, okay. if they request it, well, we can go out and, and do check. Yeah. Good. I'm glad to hear that, and I hope everybody can get help us work through this to where we don't wind up in the water warning tubes. Yeah. 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 That doesn't sound like any fun. No. So, uh, sorry. Back to. Oh, okay. No, nope. that's that was it. Uh, the uh, other one, uh, it wasn't on the formal list, uh, but another example of uh, customers that were out of town would be businesses that don't operate on a regular basis. Uh, the one that comes up is the county fair in July. Uh, we've we've had some discussions with uh, with the, with the fair board about uh, what to do. At uh, this point in time, we've asked them to try to find an alternative. The, the biggest water use is washing their animals. Uh, you know, and originally when we were in the water watch, you know, they could wash it before eight or after eight. Uh, now that we're in the, the tier one, it's one of those items that's not specifically addressed in our conservation policy. You know, what do we do with the county fair? Uh, but um, they are looking at alternatives. Uh, they've looked at a well, but there's no way they can get a well drilled between now and the fair time. Uh, so we don't really have a firm answer for them. They've talked about bringing in water, tank water from uh, farmers or something that they could use. Uh, so we are, are still looking at alternatives, but uh, that's the one thing that we didn't have a real answer for so far. Because that would be a big water usage. Yeah, there's, there's now we, they would still have their water use, like for the restrooms and the concessions and all that type of thing, and for the animal watering. I mean, you've got to water the livestock. But uh, the biggest water use is a lot of times when they're washing, because the kids, they'll just leave the hoses running, you know, mm -hmm. that type of thing. So we do see a pretty good surge during county fair and water usage out there. So, so they're thinking of trucking in water. They are thinking of trucking water. We're trying to think of ways, you know, maybe uh, maybe providing some sprayers instead of just opening hoses for, you know, different different options to kind of try to conserve wherever we can. Uh, it's it's the one unanswered question right now as we go into mm -hmm. uh, into July. So, okay, I think that covers the water conservation policy discussion. So. Uh, on to information only items. Okay, uh, information only. Um, we had our uh, electric generator urge test uh, that we run in conjunction with our air permitting with the IDNR, and we got a report back, and uh, we did just run the single generator that has the exhaust treatment on it. We did not run the other one. Uh, so the, uh, the single generator is permitted. Yes. Uh, now with the IDNR, so we're in good shape. That's a three-year? Every five years. Every five years. Okay. And we missed, I didn't catch it that it had to be done, so we missed it, so we'll have to do it in three years this time to get back on our five-year track. So in three years, we have to do it again instead of the waiting five. But. Yeah. Uh, the next item, the WAPA, that's just a uh, FYI with regard, <clears throat> WAPA instituted what they call a drought. Um, uh, mitigation type uh, fee uh, or change on, uh, they call it a drought adder component to the rates. And there was no change this year, but just an FYI, uh, the Corps is closely monitoring the water in the Missouri River Basin due to low snowpack. Uh, the reservoirs are down. And uh, so far there's no advance notice of any curtailment on hydropower production, but. Uh, if this drought continues into next year, that may become an issue. So, but for the time being, the drought outer is not going to be uh, changed. Uh, the next item, uh, our natural gas utility inspection. Uh, the one item that was outstanding that we got written up on was there was a, occasionally there was a delay in the uh, one call closeouts, uh, mainly because we were working in conjunction with the city. They do the sewer locates, we do all the rest. And the city now has their own phone line uh, to get one call re request. And so we believe that's going to help mitigate that. But that was the only one outstanding that the utility board was going to monitor for the next year. So we believe we've got that one addressed as well. Uh, and, look, and a lot of the locates were done on time. It's just that clearing them on the, the website, they they want us to have them cleared on there also. So 
with a certain period. They gave us so much time yes. to do it. Yeah. And so it was a matter of clearing them versus actually doing the locates. <clears throat> um, the other comments with regard to the water conservation, uh, I just want to make everyone aware that uh, we have been working cooperatively with the city. Uh, we're currently scrolling our water tier one warning message on the city's three electronic boards. Uh, that's Turk City Hall. And so that's just one more way for people to stay abreast of, of uh, wh what our status is. And we appreciate city's cooperation in that regard. They helped us uh, getting that message formulated and, and taking care of the scrolling for us. We're also working very closely uh, with the city. Uh, we're using RO discharge water, basically the water that used to be going to the, uh, or still goes to the river. But we have set up a mechanism to where the city was able to use that. They're using it now for street sweeping instead of the potable water. Uh, they used it when we were doing the recent street work that was done around town. Uh, their concrete grinding machine, they use that RO discharge instead of potable water. Uh, that's where we're directing any contractors that need water down here. And we did just this last week open up that we will, uh, if we have public who have a use for that water, we will make it available to the public by appointment only, regular work hours. Uh, but the public has to be aware it's non-potable. It's not for human consumption. Uh, and then the other thing that we're also doing with it, uh, that is the water we are using to clean our vehicles and equipment now. So we're no longer using our wash bay. So. And they would need to make sure they have a way to transport the water. Yes, they would have to transport it on their own. Yeah. Hmm? Pardon? They can get as many gallons as they gallons. have transport. Yeah, there's no limit on the gallon. So. As long as you have, a, as long as you have your own yeah. appointment yeah. and yeah. your own. Yeah. Or it, or barrels or yeah. whatever. It, it is high in sodium, so it's not kind of thing for like flowers or veggies or anything like that. It's, but it's an alternative for something yeah. like washing equipment and, and, and driveways and that type of thing. So, Good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Also, uh, the city, as I said, they're using it for street cleaning and street maintenance. And uh, we, we've also been working with the city. They've been working with the Department of Health. And as of right now, we've got interim approval uh, to use that discharge water for, to replenish the city swimming pool. So they should be able to maintain their, uh, their status of being open up there by using that water. So uh, it's, it's helped a lot, and uh, we think it's a, uh, an alternative for us. Uh, with regards to the uh, uh, risk assessment, I just want to let the board know that that was completed and submitted to the uh, uh, EPA. And so we're, uh, we were able to get that in before the, the June 3 timeline. And I don't know why the FCC and the EPA and all these others dropped this stuff on at the last minute, but it, it has impacted, uh, you know, the financials because none of these were budgeted because we were not aware of them, uh, what the timelines were going to be for, for compliance. But that has been submitted. We, uh, with regard to our raw water development project, we did have a kickoff meeting on June 8th. <clears throat> the survey work of the well fields has started. Uh, the engineer is also preparing the RFPs for the environmental and the geotech studies that have to be done. Uh, so that's moving along. And then uh, the engineers are also working with us on that temporary funding for the design and planning as well as the USDA funding. So uh, we just, what was it, yesterday or the day before? Jenny on the USDA funding that, that we, <laughs> we were finally able to get online. Uh, oh, we were able to get online for that last week, I think. But aren't we are but meeting with, with USDA, what, was that yeah, Monday? Yeah, she just came in on Monday. Monday, yeah. Yeah. We've been waiting on the other government site to be able to get on forever. Yeah. And that one was just finally approved. So that is moving forward. Uh, we did receive the final raw water report. Uh, McClure tweaked a little bit in conjunction with some of the requirements of USDA. So uh, that final water report's available. Uh, let's see. The other items that we have, uh, Tenasca Billings. Uh, this is slightly higher because they were already performing some of the work that was in this new contract that we have with them. Uh, so that's a little bit higher than normal. 
uh, but that's in line with their contract. And then also the uh, McClure bills, uh, $35,019.50 $19 is all in conjunction with uh, work that was previously authorized by the board. And then the last item, uh, we just wanted to make the public aware uh, that the uh, uh, office will be closed on July 5th in recognition of the uh, July 4th holiday. So those are the formal items that we wanted to bring to the board's attention. Okay. Any questions on any of that? Um, on D. D? On the messages and stuff to yeah. the people. Is there any way we can use through the, because um, there are some people that don't leave their house or aren't traveling around or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, use the phone that they use for the weather service that calls us and says, hey, you have a severe weather warning. Can they say we're in a tier one warning for water? I mean, a lot of people. Every customer did get a letter. Okay. Yeah, we did, we did mail a letter. Uh, this is all just extra. Okay. Yeah. At the city on the city boards and yeah. on our Facebook page and in the newspaper and on our website. That's all just extra. Every okay. customer did get a letter in the mail about it. Yeah. Separate from their bill. Yeah. Yeah, we did make it a separate mailing with the intention of making sure customers were aware of it. So. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Nope, not right. report. Now, yeah, are you ready for me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, we had our all hands meeting yesterday morning. Are there any I'm questions sorry. online? Okay. No. Okay. All right. Uh, we had our all hands meeting yesterday morning, and <clears throat> the uh, uh, we also had our employee recognition yesterday morning, and uh, this is uh, what we ended up doing since we didn't have our normal employee recognition meeting in, in January because of uh, uh, the pandemic. But we did recognize five employees for longevity. Uh, Paul Wingert uh, for 20 years, uh, Deb McLaughlin for 15 years, Kevin Musich for 10 years, Eric Rose five years, and Troy Ransom five years. And so uh, we just wanted to express our appreciation of those dedicated employees who are part of our dedicated workforce <coughs> that are here every day to respond to customer requirements and circumstances so we appreciate that uh, one kudo this month for Brian uh, he's our uh, meter reader and he we had a compliment from a customer uh, Brian took the time to explain some of the water conservation measures on a personal basis so they express that appreciation <clears throat> the uh, uh, we also had a, a uh, request from a customer uh, to, to find a mechanism he, he specifically said he doesn't use the internet, he doesn't watch TV, he doesn't subscribe to the paper, and, uh, but he wanted to be kept aware of the progress on the raw water development project. So uh, what we're coming up with is, is we will do periodic updates for customers. Uh, every medium we can think of, our normal, traditional, our the website, uh, social media, KNOD, and the paper. And those are the four traditionally that we do. But we'll try to find that. If there's other ways we can supplement that, uh, we will just to try to make sure our customers are aware of the progress in that regard. <clears throat> and uh, uh, just an FYI to the board and to the public uh, that we, in our uh, third quarter financials, uh, we did see a uh, financial impact from the February pol polar vortex. Uh, so that'll be reflected in the uh, uh, gas revenue expenses. Uh, and there were also some impacts to the, uh, on the water utility with regard to the water treatment plant mitigation, the raw water development project, uh, the uh, risk assessment, uh, the ongoing litigation, and the work we did with the horizontal pressure filter. And on the tel telecom side, uh, the impacts mainly due to uh, responding to the petition, uh, the programming in increases in cable TV, and then the C-band relocation. Uh, originally, it was anticipated we would see the money for the C-band in May, which would have offset some of the C-band expenses. But uh, uh, we're all subscribed and signed up, but it has not been funded yet by the federal government uh, to receive our, our monies, roughly 230000 uh, Of course, they sold the frequency, and I'm sure they probably collected a lot of that money from the, from the carriers, but 
the people who had to release frequencies, we haven't seen our funds yet, but uh, hopefully they'll release those funds sometimes in the next 60 to 90 days. So that will be a partial offset on the telecom side. Uh, we had an earlier conversation. Uh, we are, uh, there will be a public survey conducted uh, in conjunction with our uh, CDBG uh, grant that we're applying for for the water project. Uh, and so uh, there will be a, uh, in conjunction with uh, SWIPCO and Shelby County Community Chamber, they're trying to coordinate that effort for us. So uh, we're in conversation with them, but that will be a community survey that will be coming up. Also, uh, we did receive formal communication from our council with regard to the status of the uh, Loiza generating station. And currently, uh, the Iowa Utilities Board opened a docket SPU 2021-0003 on May 13th. And what they're requesting of MidAmerica uh, is to review their generating fleet overall, uh, including potential retirement of coal plants, and to look at other issues. And so uh, those of us that are municipal utilities who participate in Liza ownership uh, currently are trying to determine if we want to formally respond to that or just uh, observe what, what the communications are in the, in the uh, IUB hearing. Uh, based on conversations, ongoing conversations with MidAmerica, uh, the estimate is somewhere in the quarter million amount that we may be liable for environmentals if they do close that station. Uh, what a lot of companies appear to be doing now uh, because the transmission lines were already there, the substations were already there. A lot of these companies that are decommissioning coal plants actually are turning those properties into solar farms. So there may be alternative future uses for that property. So uh, the, the one thing that we may want to do is, is reserve the opportunity to uh, participate in a future date if it does go down that road. But uh, I'll keep the board abreast as it progresses and keep you aware of the, the things that are uh, brought up in that uh, IUB docket here. One other thing that came up, uh, private wells. Uh, for anyone out there who's, who's thinking about doing a private well, uh, just be aware that it does require city and IDNR permitting. And it's all based on um, setbacks from our uh, water system. And so anyone who's thinking along those lines, uh, you know, check with the city, check with us uh, to see if it's feasible for you. But uh, the long and the short of it is, this is a uh, this is impacting the aquifer. You know, uh, you can you can spend that money for a well and you still may not have water. You know, th this is kind of a uh, a circumstance that's basically affecting everybody up and down the both east and west mission of Botna, uh, city of Des Moines. Des Moines Water Works just announced water conservation measures. So there are 550,000 customers, 18 communities. So. It's, it's a broad range program. It's not just an HMU issue. It's not just a Harlan issue. But anyway, that's with regard to water wells. Uh, also, I just wanted to reiterate one thing that's coming up with the city. Uh, the city is uh, making the opportunity out there for uh, people to respond their Harlan 2040 survey. Uh, this is an update of their 2010 comprehensive plan. So I just, uh, we participate with the city and all their reviews and all their meetings. And so I thought this would be a good opportunity to bring that up. And that's all I have. Any questions? Yeah. Is there progress on the second, um, the torpedo sand? Uh, the engineer, we, we approved the engineering, I believe, at the last meeting, right? I believe so. Yeah, yes. and so they're they're in the process of preparing the documents to engineering design, which we have to go through again. Mm -hmm. uh, but the engineering design, and then uh, bidding documents, and then we'll schedule that for a future meeting. Okay, so that's still on track. Right. Yeah. We just we want it'll be uh, we intended it to be after, probably toward the end of the summer, so that we didn't interrupt our peak usage period. Uh, so we're probably talking, uh, doing it sometime this fall. Okay. So. All right. Any questions? Any comments? Mr. Anlicker. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm glad you opened it up again. Thank you for that. My question is, are we working on the line from the well field to the treatment plant, or are we basically working on the wells? Both. Both? Yeah. Is the line 
to the treatment plant going to have to be replaced? Uh, there's a new section basically from the treatment plant down to the north edge of the well field. Uh, so we're basically talking the piping within the well field and then the piping coming from the east side of the river over. Okay. Yeah. I hadn't heard, I just want to hear, you know, you're working on the wells, obviously, and they need it. So. Yeah, no, it's the wells and the pipe gathering system. Good. Yeah. That's all the question I have. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yes. <clears throat> Doesn't look like anybody online has anything. Okay. What about the Fourth of July? Oh, there. Were, I'm sorry. Since oh. we have the city here. Yeah. <laughs> the city. Uh, the city. Uh, the city. Uh, yeah. Is there going to be any um, any concerns regarding fireworks and the potential fire and um, the fact that we are kind of short on water to put one out if we had one? Uh, you bet. Um, the EMA office and fire chief are reg they regularly review that. Just remind the public that um, the fire danger warning, uh, we will use the marquee signs as well. Right now it's in a low situation. Um, with the rain last weekend, rain last night, and projected rain the next three to four days by July 4th, um, not expecting that. Okay. Um, yet again, the marquee signs as well as uh, out at 4459, there's one of the signs that was posted on the front of the fire station. At this point, we don't expect that. We're just reviewing that again this morning with fire chief. Okay. And then is the fire department using unpotable water to wash their equipment? At, th at this time, yes. Um, and also, we are looking at, as for the public's awareness, we've talked about this with the council as well, is uh, in terms of preservation of property, if there was a, a fire event, uh, we will the meeting that I guess the most rapid and quick supply is off of a hydrant. As soon as practically possible, we will look to disconnect from that hydrant once the shuttling and other sources are up and running, either coming from uh, dry wells, other community and tankers, and we will be putting a dry well. Um, there's already some strategic dry wells out in the county. We will be putting one in Little George as well, mm -hmm. or Lake George. It basically, what, what we talk about with the dry well is like where we pull from surface water, a pond, or an old yes. gravel pit, or something like that. So, yeah. Okay. Any other adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.